So I asked you guys and gals, which video would you like to see first? Why is Xenoverse 2 must end or the Fortnite item shop rant? And the majority of the votes went with the item shop rant. So here I am delivering on that. Now at the time of this recording, Fortnite Mirrors is set to return and we're gonna have some crazy ass collabs in this shop as well as returning one. So I'm really looking forward to it all as well as Horde Rush. I really love that mode since like last year. However, even though we're set to have one of the best Fortnite mirrors of all time, I want to talk about the item shop since they've been a problem ever since the beginning of Chapter 5. There's no doubt that they've become a huge disaster throughout Chapter 5. Cosmetics and bundles not returning, same cosmetics coming back over and over again, the ridiculous pricing of said cosmetics, and the obnoxious way of handling shops. Now, personally, I don't bitch about the shop so much, but I do express my criticisms with them. And after what's been going on with these shops, I think it's time I fully talk about them. Goku getting your over one star, the protagonist is here, and today we're going to be talking about the Fortnite item shops. So, I'm just going to get the second problem out of the way. This is the first case of item shops that I've seen throughout these months that we have not seen were turning bundles and cosmetics during the beginning of Chapter 5. All of the other seasons before Chapter 5 had bundles along with their prospective cosmetics, but this is the case where they've omitted bundles and emos to a major amount. A good few examples of this is that they forgot Jack Skeleton's emote along with the bundle. They forgot Hulk's emote along with the bundle as well. They forgot about Scarlet Witch and Star Lord's emotes and bundles. And even when they brought back Futurama as well as the Rogue and Gamba bundles, they didn't bring back any of their gear bundles either. And if you want to talk about the recent bundles that didn't return, look no further than the Silk Sonic bundle. That didn't return either because of the emotes. There are so many more bundles that they've forgotten about, but I think you get the point. Now, why feel the need to make decisions like this? I'll tell you why. And it's the Lego Fortnite mode. That is mainly the reason why we kept seeing the same cosmetics over and over again. They are doing everything they can to make sure every cosmetic is usable in all of the new modes. So because of this, most of the cosmetics couldn't return before getting updated to Fortnite. This is also a reason why Winterfest 2023 bombed so hard. Now, I will cut Lego some slack for two reasons. One, all of the stuff I mentioned except for Silk Sonic's emotes were updated and they did make their return. And two, the rules don't apply to certain collabs like Dragon Ball, Futurama, Game of Thrones, Jujutsu Kaisen, and many more. My theory is that they probably can't really make any Legos for anime skins or gaming skins because they never had any Legos. That's just my theory, but for the most part, Lego does get in the way of returning cosmetics. And even when they were updated, the shops in season four, in my opinion, have been hella repetitive. And that leads into my second reason. As if forgetting bundles and cosmetics wasn't enough, they've been recycling the exact same cosmetics over and over again. We've been seeing the same 20 to 30 cosmetics all over again. That's been very dreadful and tiring. I remember seeing the Rick and Morty set being in the shop three times in one month. And that is exactly what happened with the Invincible set during Season 2. Hell, even icon bundles like The Weeknd and Lewis Hamilton, they've been oversaturated throughout Chapter 5. And do I have to mention Deadpool and Wolverine? I understand that this was good for promotion for the new movie, but they've been in the shop for almost 50 days now, and we can argue that the Fortnite Festival skins stay in the shop for a very long period. But it's part of their prospective seasons for Fortnite Festival. An item shop skin to promote the two to three month long season of a game mode is completely different from an item shop skin that's there to promote a show or a game for a few days. I still can't get over people complaining about the weekend combat skin staying in the shop for almost three months, yet nobody had the same energy for Chromatica Lady Gaga. Now if your argument is that you've gotten used to it, then fair enough. But it's not just collabs either, it's also Fortnite originals. Like a few examples I can think of. The Bell Berry set, Isabel, and don't and don't even get me started on the fucking brat. And do I have to mention the stupid ass birds? By the way, I don't know why. Who who I don't know who thought it was a good idea to give them a second wave. And look, I'm all for new skins and I enjoy the new collabs we've gotten. But there are so many old cosmetics that they need to bring back. Two of the biggest examples are Street Fighter and Naruto. They haven't came back since late 2022, which is really concerning. Same with Attack on Titan, that hasn't been seen in over a year. And can I mention League of Legends, God of War, 
Halo, Resident Evil. Like, there's so many collapse that needs to return. So if they can bring back Black Widow and her pickaxe along with an emote, then they can do the same for these cosmetics, especially Naruto and Street Fighter. And again, I don't mind getting new stuff. However, even when we do get it, the pricing of some of these new cosmetics are terrible. When they released the car bundles, the prices were highway robbery. The highest a car bundle has been was 4,000 V-Bucks. Thank God they've listened and actually toned down the prices. But it doesn't stop there. When Fortnite Festival was released, so were the jam tracks. 500 V-Bucks for a jam track is a bit much, especially when they sold a lobby track and jam track together for the same price. Lobby tracks cost almost half the price of a jam track. And in my opinion, jam tracks should at least be around 300 V-Bucks a pop. But I don't think the prices are that outrageous. And if you think I was going to mention the festival pass, I'm sorry, but no. 1800 V-Bucks for the festival pass is not a bad price, considering that we get cosmetics that we can use in all of the modes, except for mo Rocket Racing for the most part. Now, recently, they've been reducing the prices of instruments to reasonable prices, which is really good. But I think the worst thing to come out of these new modes are the LEGO sets for LEGO Fortnite. These have to be the absolute worst kind of cosmetics to be in the shop. You know, if these were physical sets sold for $10 each, then I have no issue with that. But the prices on each of these sets are just absolute dog water. Who's paying $20 for a digital LEGO set? That's just ridiculous. And that was just the cosmetics for the new modes. I haven't even gotten into the BR collapse we've gotten since the middle of season two when the avatar cosmetics came out they were overpriced 2000 v bucks for a skin a pickaxe and a back bling no edit styles no reactivity no built-in emotes and if you wanted all of the cosmetics you have to spend almost 6000 v bucks because there's one bundle where you can get both zuko and katara's cosmetics for 3200 v bucks which is very overpriced i said this before and i'll say it again each of the Ninja Turtles costed 1,600 V-Bucks with their back blings and pickaxes. And if you wanted to get all four skins, you can buy the bundle for 3,400 V-Bucks. That's four skins, four pickaxes, and four back blings for 3,400 V-Bucks, which is just as valuable as the Metallica bundle. And it doesn't stop there. They did this with Wave 3 of My Hero Academia. When the League of Villains came out, each skin was also 2,000 V-Bucks, and at the very least, when it comes to Tomo and Himiko, they each had an edit style and an emote, so I can't really dog on that much, especially considering that I did buy Himiko, so yeah. However, Dobby should have been at 1,600 or 1,800 V-Bucks, and the bundle itself is overpriced. Almost 4,000 V-Bucks for everything, which is hella crazy. Oh, and since we're on anime collabs, They've also released Wave 5 of Dragon Ball Cosmetics. This time we have Android 17 and 18, as well as Trunks. And I was hella excited for that. Now, at least you can buy either one of the Androids or the bundle for 2300 V-Bucks. But Trunks shouldn't have been at 2000 V-Bucks. At the very least, he should have been at 1800 instead. He's not a legendary skin like some of the other Dragon Ball skins. So, do you see what I'm going with here? The overpricing of these cosmetics is just outrageous. So why are these cosmetics so damn expensive? One thing, one major thing, and that's the removal of the rarity system. Say what you want about it, you know, but if the rarities were still present to this day, I guarantee you that stuff like Avatar, the Pirates of the Caribbean bundle, not the cosmetics separately, but the bundle itself, as well as some of the new anime cosmetics, wouldn't be this expensive. Getting rid of it not only made the item shops worse, but even the locker as well. The locker was already horrible enough, but now they just made it even worse. Cosmetic rarity was not only an essential and part of Fortnite's identity, but it also helped in dictating how much a skin is going to cost. If it's an uncommon skin, it'll be around 800 V-Bucks or at the very least 1000 V-Bucks. If it's a rare skin, it's going to be between 1000 to 1200 V-Bucks. Epic skin, 1500 to 1600 and the legendary is on the range of 1800 to 2000 V-Bucks. And you can argue that people who pay 2000 V-Bucks for one skin shouldn't complain about paying 2000 for one avatar pack. That's completely false. The reason why is because of the rarity system. It helped dictate how valuable a skin is. Majority of the collabs we've seen that aren't DC, Marvel Icon, etc. are epic rarity. And since the avatar skins are epic rarity, 
they should not be at 2,000 V bucks each. And the same goes for trunks from Dragon Ball. There was nothing wrong with the rarity system, so why break something that didn't need to be fixed? And it didn't help that Epic has doubled down on their decision, which was an awful move they pulled. They know people are upset and pissed off at this decision. Even today, six months later, hopefully they'll reverse this decision in chapter six, because not only did they sneak this behind the avatar event, but the locker itself is so fucking awful. But what's not awful is you leaving a like on the video if you're enjoying the video so far, as well as hitting the subscribe button and also turning the notifications on so you won't miss out on any new videos I upload. Now, going back onto the cosmetics for the three modes, they are taking up too much space in the item shop. If we count the Fortnite Festival bundles centered on the artists, the instruments, the instrument emotes, the jam tracks, the Lego kits, and the card cosmetics, that's literally half of the item shop, if not more than half. And it doesn't help that they keep bundling instruments into the Marvel bundles. Deadpool and Wolverine, Iron Spider, Black Cat, and now Iron Man Mark 45. I don't know why they keep doing this. Not everyone is going to use these instruments. As well as the Lego sets because they decided to bundle already existing Marvel skins in with the new decor sets. Which is hella desperate in my opinion. Because rarely anyone is buying these sets because of how garbagely overpriced these sets are. I understand that Epic wants to sell these cosmetics, but that doesn't mean forcing customers to buy said cosmetics. The Marvel instruments should have been sold without being part of the bundles. So yeah, these item shops for the most part have been a major disaster. However, not all hope is lost because I do have some solutions on how Epic can make these shops fun again. Number one, stop shoving these cosmetics for the new modes in our faces and work on making separate shops for each mode. Cluttering the item shops with all these instruments, jam tracks, cards, etc. is just overwhelming. Not everyone is interested, especially considering how low two thirds of the modes are in terms of numbers. So Epic, all I'm asking is for you to make separate shops for the new modes. That way people who do enjoy the modes can buy the specific cosmetics. Personally, I mostly play Fortnite Festival out of the three, and I do buy festival passes because of the instruments and the featured artists. Like I said before, the festival passes aren't really that bad of a price. 1800 V-Bucks for like a bunch of cosmetics that you can actually use in all the other modes, it's not really a bad price. Now, number two, renew some of these contracts and bring more of the old collabs back into the shop. It's very criminal that the Street Fighter and Naruto collabs haven't came back in two years. People are tired of seeing the same old collabs coming back over and over again. If you want to keep the shops fresh, add more variety with the original skins and bring back more older collabs. And number three, finally, bring back the rarity system. Over 90% of your audience hate the way the locker looks now without rarities. And it doesn't help that these recent collabs have been getting hella expensive. And that's not counting the new icon bundles like Nikkei 30 and Rubius, not even some of the other new collaborations that are coming out. And yes, I know they can reduce the prices of the cosmetics if they aren't selling well. And I'm well aware that I don't have to buy them if I think they're too expensive. The same goes for the rest of you, but they shouldn't have overpriced them in the first place. Now, hopefully Epic takes any of these solutions into consideration. Don't get me wrong, Epic is far from being a greedy company unlike other gaming companies. And I understand that they want to make money, especially for a free to play game. But there is a point where people are going to get tired of seeing the same old cosmetics come back frequently, especially those who are OG to the game. And that's something that I think Clark should have taken into consideration or at the very least acknowledge. So six months ago, Clark Clint made a video titled, Stop Complaining About Fortnite Item Shops. In the video, he talks about chapter five's item shops and why people shouldn't complain about them. Now, I agree with the majority of the video and I think people should watch the video before judging it based on the title because the amount of dislikes on the video is hella ridiculous. However, the one thing I highly disagree on is that people who complain about the item shops can't even afford what's in the shops. That part's not entirely true with all due respect. A lot of the people, including content creators who've complained about the shops, do have the money to afford what's in the game. And people in your comment section have admitted that they have the V-Bucks for what's in the shop, but it's not the stuff that they want. And if the shops are continuously getting bad for weeks or even months, they do have a right to criticize or complain or even be concerned. Also, think of it this way. 
people who have no money or v bucks to spend wouldn't be complaining about the shots being bad in the first place however if this is coming from your perspective i 100 percent understand i do think it's stupid for people to complain if they don't even have the funds to get what they're waiting for despite the minority of people doing that once again i highly recommend you check out clark's video on this it's really good don't let the title get you okay he actually made a lot of good points in the video also check out his content because he makes amazing fortnite commentaries but he really needs to dial it back on the usage of that fortnite logo i mean if it works for him that's totally fine i just wish he didn't respond to me so rudely i guess to wrap up this video i will say this i do genuinely think that the item shops will get better in the future as i always say good things come to those who wait fortnite mills is on the horizon at the time of this recording so expect to see collabs like marshmallow mephisto Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and even Wave 2 of Night Before Christmas, and much more. And like I said before, if Black Widow can return after being gone for almost four years, there's no doubt that some of the other collabs will return one day. Hopefully Epic can make that happen, but all we can do is wait. Just like we have to wait for the current battle passes to come in almost two years, which I don't mind. Speaking of which, Chapter 5 is coming to an end soon, and I've been meaning to give my thoughts on all the battle pass skins of the chapter as well as give my thoughts on the battle passes now that will uh, forever be non-exclusive. So if you want to see both of those, then make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on and maybe we can make that happen. But until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, Goki Genyo and have a sarcastic day everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.